Hello, and welcome to the next episode of Making Mannequin Heads into Planters. Um, so this episode is going to be a little bit different. Look, I'm in a different place. I'm in the, the pottery corner. Um, Larry's overworking on a pot and glazing a pot, so I thought I would take this opportunity um, to get some painting started on this um, the head. So I'm going to, I've decided that with the, the piping, it's in a really good place, I think. I really like what it, where it's come to. And yes, this table is very high for the chair I'm sitting in, but it actually works well for me, I think. Um, <clears throat> so I'm getting my paints out and I'm using the acrylic, uh, the, yeah, acrylic, but the metallic acrylics I decided I thought would be really cool. Uh, the silver, I'm pretty much leaving silver, and then the other colors I'm going with a um, <clears throat> bright brass, which is very, very gold, and then a copper, uh, or it's actually bronze, but it looks very coppery when I've used it in the past. Here, this one's actually open. I don't know, I have very much left of this um, bright brass gold. And so I'm gonna use, there we go, metallics on these. And we're gonna experiment. And then I'm gonna also use yellow, because yellow goes along with, oh, this is the very, very thin yellow. I put too much water in there. So we've got the paints that we need. Hi, Lee. Bye, Lee. Um, we're gonna start <clears throat> with these stripes down the front. I'm gonna turn this so that you can see exactly what I'm doing as I do it. What a concept, right? <clears throat> Whoa. Sorry, you almost fell over. <coughs> so, seeing what I'm doing. Hi, how are you? Good. All right. So, I'm going to start with this bright brass. I'm going to do every other one uh, in the color. In, in this in this same color, I think. I'm gonna alternate. I do have silver paint, but they're already silver. So I'm like, okay, so I basically have three colors to work with. Um, I'm not worried about getting it exact, uh, but I do want to make it neat. As I always say, where is it gonna be? Let's keep the perspective, right? Outside, that's right. So um, I just think this will bring a, a real element of <clears throat> sort of mechanical into it. And then I'm going to, so what I'm doing is I'm doing, I'm going to leave silver, do this gold or color, and then do the, uh, the, the copper color and then the gold. So then, oh, I screwed that up. Well, maybe I'll just do gold and, yeah, I'll just do gold and this copper wheel. So we're moving, I'm shifting my, what I'm doing already because I didn't pay close enough attention to which one I was painting on. So I'm just putting a light coat on this foam. Now, as we talked about in the past, when coloring this foam, I found with the, the original masks that I did, which if you look back there is on that shelf, see that right there? When I spray painted the foam, it made it very difficult to handle because the spray paint, with the flex flexibility of the foam, the spray paint is not flexible. Oddly enough, uh, maybe not oddly to you, but to me it was a surprise. So uh, it flaked off and I was really bummed by that. But it ended up, at, at first I was really bummed, and then I realized it was showing the silver through, so it actually ended up being pretty darn cool. Uh, but it was not expected, therefore I was kind of like, wow, no, at first, wah, wah. Um, yeah, so lesson learned, and then I tried that the paint with this acrylic on the foam, and the acrylic works actually very well. Um, make sure I get coverage pretty much all the way down. I want it to look cool, not crappy, right? <laughs> it's always a nice gold to have. I want it to be cool, not crappy. And um, so since I'm painting both 
I don't have to worry with this coat about being exact, uh, keeping it just on the one, because I can always overlap a little bit. It gives me a little, little leeway to be able to really get down into those nooks and crannies. Uh, there we go. And in between them. Because then when I put the next color on, I don't have to be as particular, as specific. Um, gives me a little bit more uh, freedom with putting on the paint. There we go. So the next stage of this after the painting, because all of the paint that I want, or all of the foam that I wanted to put on, I've done, right? We're, we're done with that phase. Since we're done with that phase, um, we need to figure out what the next step would be. And as far as I know, once that's done and the face is painted with the spray paint, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tape around the face, I'll tape all of this to mask it off <clears throat> so that then when I do paint the face with the spray paint and do the drippy effect with this spray paint, uh, which I'll show you on the other side of the house. Um, it's too cold to be outside, so I'm going to have to do it inside, but we'll do it over where I've sprayed before on my workbench. And um, when we do that, we're, we'll be done with the sort of zhuzhing, right? And since we'll be done with the zhuzhing, we're going to need to uh, take the next step of hollowing out the head because I'm doing this the opposite direction, right? Or the opposite order, whereas I've always done hollow the head first. And it sounds very strange, but it is what it is. Clear the cranium first and then go into, you know, designing the head and, and doing all the effects of the head. So I don't, um, still don't have the, the head done and we'll need, we will need to do that because otherwise we have no place to put the plant and the soil. I know that sounds very obvious, but it's kind of like, oh yeah, we definitely have to hollow it out. That's like the whole purpose and function of these heads is to be planters, thus making mannequin heads into planters. Um, so this is good. I'm putting it on medium weight. This um, paint is a very lightweight paint. So it works beautifully on, of all things, fabric because it soaks in really well and it's, um, it <clears throat> it's not so thick that it stay, stays on this surface completely, but it also isn't so thin that it just is completely absorbed into the fabric. It's a beautiful consistency. However, on solid surfaces, it does make it more challenging because it is much lighter. So I've been finding with other, part, other parts of these projects that when I paint with this paint, I often um, need to go over with a second coat to really make it, make it stand out. However, with what I'm doing, because I'm alternating the colors so well, I don't think I'm gonna to need to do a second coat uh, because that metallic is already underneath with on the foam. And since the foam is already in that color or in that uh, the sheen, I think this is just sort of enhancing, it's just coloring uh, and that, in that, that under sheen will enhance this paint really well to um, make it look more consistent. I am glad, just to make a comment, I'm glad that I went over with that brassy color because um, it makes doing this color much easier. Did you find it, Larry? No. No. I brought down a, um, a thing for the hose and we completely rearranged the basement for the, um, the sitting area, the living room, or it's a family room really down here. We've got a giant TV and a fireplace and stuff like that. It's not finished yet, but we'll be working on finishing. But so since we moved in a year ago, just over a year ago, we um, haven't really like established our zones fully. You know, we've been waiting to get a feel for the space. 
<clears throat> there we go. I like that. That looks wonderful. It feels good. Nice and even. Uh, I think it'll look really cool out in the light. It'll really pick that up. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Now that totally changes the look, right? Awesome. So the middle I'm going to actually do in silver. <clears throat> Down the way, I have this silver. It's a very metallic-y silver. So it'll pick it up as a little bit different color, but it'll brighten the silver that is the tubing. And oops, 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 got it over the edge. And, um, and it'll give it so that the other silver that's here, just the regular tubing silver, will um, then look a little different from the painted silver. Like I said, it like super brightens it up. The vertical pieces that I have, the pieces that are sticking straight out from the, um, the throat area here, I am going to paint just the ends like I did on, um, well, I didn't just paint the ends on Spike, but uh, it's going to be the ends. And what I'm gonna do is around the face, I was thinking about right around the jawline here, that I may overlap, I'm going to definitely overlap it with my silver paint in order to, uh, and I was thinking about this the other day, I'm, I'm gonna paint up here, to get it so that it has sort of that deeper silver color. Not only that, but that when I then um, go ahead and paint with the spray paint, and I'm just doing this one round of the tubing because I'll paint the other ones in, in the other colors. Um, when I do the spray paint and I mask it, that way my masking doesn't have to be absolutely perfect along that edge. And it gives me a little bit more um, leeway freedom when masking to not have to be perfect and so uh, detailed, but still get real good clean lines. And it, um, I've learned that over the years, if you overlap in your painting <clears throat> and I've learned this on just actually literally painting walls is that if you overlap one color to the other and while you're masking it makes your um, lines your masking lines uh, much better because you don't see like there's not suddenly a dark blue underneath if, if the masking doesn't come all the way under it's just the silver is continuing and your eye doesn't register that it's not an exact line so just word to the wise, if you're masking anything out, that overlap will help you, overlap of colors, will help you um, visually get a better line without having to be absolutely perfect and exact. Um, it took me a while to learn that. And I think I learned it by accident because I'd gotten sloppy and then I looked back and I'm like, holy crap, that actually came out really good where I was really worried um, I was doing trim I don't usually use tape on trim, but whatever it was, I was using tape on the trim and <clears throat> I was like, ah, I'm not sure how to use this. Um, but I, I had gotten it on the wall. Uh, so I brought the wall color onto the trim a little bit and then taped and I was like, holy crap, that worked actually really, really, really well. Gave me a super sharp line. It was in a place that was really obvious. It's not like, you know, like a back corner or something like that. And I wanted it to be very clean and look very nice. So, and that actually was a nice, nice surprise. Um, there we go. All right, cool. So that silver really is metallic-y, liquidy. It's very, very pretty. I like that silver a lot. So then we're gonna go back to my gold and I'm just gonna start working on the little, um, I'm gonna, oh, actually I'm not. And I'm gonna finish up right there. So I hope you enjoyed this and um, got a little bit of uh, information out of it. And we're working through this uh, pretty well now, getting our, working our way around. It's gonna be doing the tops of these and then the other ones and not overkilling it with color, but giving it that metallic sheen that we want with the metallic paints. All right, I hope you have a wonderful day. Take a deep breath in. 
Uh, that's better. And I hope you put lots of love out in the world. There's not enough love in the world. I know you hear me say it every time, but it's true. Be easy on yourself. Let yourself make mistakes. Learn from those mistakes. That's the important thing, right? And have a great day. Bye.